Hello and welcome to News Liber Sports. I'm Moses Echodu and uh, we bring you nothing but the very best of sporting stories. And today we're going to be focusing so much on that is the story between Liverpool and Arsenal. The game will be live at Anfield uh, tomorrow. And of course, the various uh, you know, different media houses will be broadcasting it. But with me uh, on, in the house today, I have Brian Mugabe, the usual suspect. We're going to be discussing it. Brian, thank you so much for coming back. Well, you know, Liverpool just in the signing, uh, you know, that is going to broadcast the game as well. Hopefully, in the future, ah, okay. yes, yes, hopefully, <laughs> in the future, we'll be able to broadcast that. However, Brian Oxlade Chamberlain signs a new, uh, you know, contract with Liverpool. Uh, he, he had a very interesting game against Norwich City. Uh, and then he had uh, which team did they play last weekend? Uh, they played Saints. They played, yeah, to Tottenham. He had another fabulous uh, encounter against uh, the Saints as well. And uh, you could see that, uh, you know, he's, he's starting to put. The, the injury woes behind mm. him and now he's trying to just focus on playing the game of football exactly. but what does Liverpool have to do in order to win the game against Arsenal at Anfield tomorrow well I think uh, when you look at the two teams a lot has really changed for Arsenal and I Emery believes that uh, he has the right pieces for the formations yeah. the silence in that, that you look at their defensive department at least that addition of Luis yeah. uh, plays a bigger part in such matches I mean this is a defender who's really experienced so I believe his leadership will be key at the back then for Liverpool I think uh, to me I've watched all the games that I've played three games two in the Premier League and then one Super Cup against Chelsea I think that their only problem is at the back. They yeah. love playing in, uh, they're using that high line defensive structure. And to yeah. me, it's not really working out for them simply because it, it makes it very easy for opponents to run behind the defenders. Especially if you're playing against a team that has pacey wingers or players that uh, do have that sort of pace. Not only that, but if you're playing against a team that has one piece or player that has that ability to lob those balls, balls to, ball. the, yeah, to, the, to the striker. So, looking at this match just in the natural, I really think that it's going to be a little bit tactical because both teams are going to line up in a 4-3-3 formation yeah. but uh, I think Arsenal should have that good game reading ability to make use of uh, Liverpool's defensive structure because yeah. if you do have Pepe because I, I don't think Nelson is going to start that game because mm -hmm. this is a time when you need most of your experienced uh, experience players and of course the price tag for yeah. Pepe you didn't sign him to sit on bench when you're playing against Liverpool when you speak about Pepe and uh, mm -hmm. you know Emery did come out yesterday and said that yeah. he's been very impressive in training Okay. He had a few minutes against Bande where he was also very good and he, he says that he wishes, uh, he thinks that he's, the time is coming or the time, uh, the time has come for him to, to have a little bit more minutes, uh, exactly. whether that means that he's going to start the game or he's going to be uh, thrown in the second half at the beginning of the second half, it's probably something that we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, Nicolas Pepe, and you talk about how Liverpool play forward. Mm. I think this is the right time when Arsenal actually got a player like David Ruiz who yeah. has that ability to pick up the ball and mm -hmm. make those long-range passes mm -hmm. that probably players like Nicolas Pepe, Aubameyang and Lacazette because of how pacey they are can take advantage of this. Yeah, true. I think that will really work out for Arsenal and uh, we don't expect Nelson to play of course so we yeah. shall be seeing that 4-3-3 of uh, Uba, Pepe and then Lacazette. Of course Lacazette playing between the two uh, pacey yeah. in that formation. So I think that really works out because they do have very many options either to play those long balls from Luis or from Guendouzi as well. Sometimes yeah. he tries those long passes. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but uh, against Bandy, Bandy was trying to press them, but they played those intricate, those short passes to beat the press. Yeah. So I think they have two, uh, they have actually two abilities or things they can do to make sure that they beat the Liverpool press. Mm -hmm. Either use those long balls or play those short passes and make sure that you create spaces and score goals. Because for Liverpool, they believe they can play that high line simply because uh, they think they have that ability to track back very fast. You look yeah. at Robertson, you look at Trent Arnold, they believe they have that pace offensively and defensively. But for Arsenal, I believe that Pepe and uh, Aubameyang, if they have that good game ring ability, they can run behind the defenders and create for Lacazette. Now, you look at Liverpool, mm. uh, Henderson, the captain of the team, Okay. Um, I don't really see him as a mercurial kind of player for this kind of game. Mm -hmm. uh, I would rather you have uh, players like maybe uh, that is uh, uh, Oxley Chamberlain just mm -hmm. in that mid in that midfield because of Not how Fabinho. Uh, Fabinho, you would have him sitting deep 
uh, because, uh, to, alongside uh, uh, James Milner because yeah. of how you know workaholic they are. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Oxley Chamberlain offers two things: he knows how to pass the ball, um, yeah. but also he has the ability to create a counterattack because of his pace. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons as to why he left Arsenal was because he was so much played on the wings, and yet he preferred to play right in the middle of the park where he feels he can be able to dictate the game of play. And probably that is one thing that we can look at. And also you look at Liverpool's bench, yep. so much wealthy, because mm -hmm. when you have um, a Mohamed Salah coming out of the game, you have Shakiri coming right in, um, you have uh, Firmino coming off the game, you have Divo Korik, uh, who had, you know, who, who we all know about how uh, precise he is when it comes to scoring the goal. So I think in terms of firepower, Liverpool mm. have it all sorted out. But the bit, the most important player for Liverpool has to be Firmino because of how much he brings Mohamed Salah mm. and Sadumane into the game of play. Mm. You know, he creates the spaces that they can run into. And then, of course, uh, that is, and I think that is where Arsenal need to put so much focus on because mm. Firmino has a good game, Liverpool have the three points in the back. Yeah, and uh, I, I think it's also going to depend on the movement of Arsenal's fullbacks, uh, yeah. Montreal and then uh, Matlan Nails. Because when you look at the previous game, what Firmino did to <laughs> Matlan Nails, not only that, but uh, you look at Salah and then Mane, I believe they have that ability to give the fullbacks a hard time because we all know that Arsenal will tend to sit back and then try to soak in the pressure and then hit on the counter attacks. Yeah. But are they good enough going up front? I think it's only the front three that have that ability of in terms of pace but you look at the fullbacks i know they can play offensively but defensively are they going to track back as fast as other people they are playing against against yeah. salah against money because you look at these two players put yourself in a situation where arsenal is going to be with a ball in position attacking and then they lose it in the final third yeah. what is going to happen uh, fabinho or even uh, alexander trent arnold can just uh, get the ball pass it up front to maybe money or salah and that's how they're going to break down the arsenal's defensive structure so for me i think that the movements of the fullbacks are also going to determine the results against liverpool all right and of course that is the arsenal game and uh, before we wind up, wind that up break uh, Craig, yep. your prediction for the game uh it's three two four two liverpool 3 4 4 2 Liverpool. Yeah. Any key players to watch out for? Of course, for Arsenal, everyone will be keeping an eye on Nicolas Pepe, yeah. David Lewis as well. Because I know Arsenal fans, they've been shipping in very many goals against Liverpool yeah. lately. So they would love to see how their defense has really improved. And now that at least they have David Lewis. So I think it's going to be the new signing, Pepe, the likes of Uber and Lacazette, they exactly know what to do. Yeah. They've been in the Premier League. And for Liverpool, of course, we've talked about Firmino, but I think it's all about the front three. Once yeah. they show up, they can bully anything. All right. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, for Arsenal, they are pretty much I'll be keeping tabs on uh, how Danny Sebalos, uh, you know, goes on because he had a fantastic exactly. showing against Burnley. Um, and the question will be, can he have another kind of uh, showing against uh, uh, Liverpool, who are pretty much a very organized side. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, David Ruiz, can he continue with the kind of bully character that he had against Burnley and, you know, bully Roberto Firmino, uh, his fellow countryman. So, for me, those are the kind of players that I'll be looking at too. And um, the scoring, it's going to be a high-scoring game, but I'll still give it to, that is Liverpool as well, probably a 3-2 uh, to Liverpool. Now, as we wind up, yeah. in a nutshell, in a minute, mm. one Bissaka, welcomes his former employers that is uh crystal palace to old trafford manchester united did not have a, uh, did not enjoy the result that came from uh wolverhampton at uh, the Milan the milanox and then uh you, you look at crystal palace they've been struggling with uh, the game of play uh wilfred zaha is playing like he's is is certain a different planet because he's, <laughs> he thought he was going to move on to another club yeah. in a nutshell what do you make of this game well, you know, it's really dangerous to keep a team, uh, to keep a player on the team when he doesn't want to stay. And yeah. yet we all know that Crystal Palace has been depending so much, depending so much on Zaha. Zaha. Now, what really happens if a player doesn't want to play for you and is the one you're depending on? Yeah. So for me, looking at Crystal Palace, I think they have really turned out to be predictable in that 4-4-2. Yeah. And I think the only thing they can do is to sit back. They have been playing that defensive type of football, despite the fact uh, them having the likes of Zaha, the likes of, uh, I'm forgetting, their pace. Winger, but we shall get to that. Uh, that is Townsend. Townsend, yeah. yeah. 
uh, having all those players, but they have been playing defensive type of football. But I think that uh, looking at United, they have all it takes only if they improve on their creative department. I believe that Paul Pogba has actually been very poor in terms of creating for Man United. It is right. I think it, Paul Pogba's performance comes down to the fact that he has to play deep to collect yeah. that ball. But even sometimes when he plays deep, uh, he has that ability to cross. Because yeah. if you remember that assist against Chelsea. Chelsea. But those things don't happen every day. Every day, yeah. Yeah, so I believe that, first of all, Man United, they need to uh, work on their performances in the final third. Paul Pogba needs to create for the team. But they do have all it takes to make sure that they stretch this defensive structure of Crystal Palace because yes. you have the likes of James, he has the pace, make use of the pace, mm-hmm. create the uh, spaces for him to run through, the likes of uh, Rashford as well, Martial, they're yeah. in good form. So I believe that they have what it takes to make sure that after the 90 minutes, I know that Crystal Palace is going to be very stubborn in that defensive shape, but I believe after 90 minutes, Man United will run away with maximum points. I also believe that United will run away with maximum points and probably goals coming in from Anthony Marshall and Marcus Rashford as well. Um, I don't see so much goals from uh, Hesse Lingard, so we'll keep it at that. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, but uh, uh, is this final the weekend? when uh, Frank Lampard gets his three points. They come up against a very stubborn Norwich side that has yeah. Timo uh, Puki, they have uh, Stepman, they have uh, you know, uh, the goalkeeper Tim Krul mm. as well. Probably one of the best short stoppers in, in, the, in the league. Is this a moment when we think that you know, with the kind of performance that we, we saw Chelsea having at, at, against Manchester United, in the hope of good football, they had fantastic training against Liverpool in the in the Super Cup. Then they had another beautiful game against Leicester City. But is this the moment when you think Frank Lampard will be able to bring his forces together and pick up a win? I, th- I think they can. They can because when you look at how uh, Daniel loves to line up uh, that Norwich uh, City coach mm. in that uh, four-two-three-one formation, it's expansive, true, but they focus more on attacking. Mm. And then yet we see that for Chelsea, either much or they have not been getting the results, but. Uh, if they have that good game reading ability against that 4 2 3 1 formation of Norwich, they can pull a rabbit out of the hat simply because uh, you look at the players that they do have, the likes of uh, William in there, the likes yeah. of Pedro, these are players, they have that ability of pace. So that's what you need to do against Norwich because Norwich is going to attack, but they, they are not going to watch their box. Yeah. So that literally means that you need to make use of other spaces that they are going to create at the back, and then you have to score a goal. So I believe that uh, this should be a win for Chelsea. If they don't win this, then actually don't yeah. know which games they are going to win. There's a lot of work to be done. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, um, Norwich City will press so much that uh, Tribal alongside Leitner will have you know, a fantastic game to be able to close yeah, out and the legs of uh, Mason Mount, uh, the yeah, legs too. of probably you know, Pedro, and uh, you know, probably if Rose Buckley is given a chance as well to have a run in this game, um, we'll wait and see. Uh, but Hanley and Godfrey will have to be very wary of uh, the kind of stubborn player Olivier Giroud is uh, uh, for Chelsea. But again, uh, I also think that this is, this is a, a golden opportunity for Chelsea uh, yeah. to pick up the vital three points, the first of the season for them. And uh, the, the question will be, can they keep uh, Tim uh, P- Puki, who has been very industrious uh, in the league so far, scoring four goals, and now he's joint top scorer alongside Raheem Sterling of Manchester City. But of course, and, and the thing is, we are looking at uh, we are looking at Puki. <laughs> That's a funny name. We are looking at Puki, but. We are forgetting the creative department of Norwich. Yeah. Cantwell has actually been very brilliant, brilliant yeah. in terms of creating for Puki. Yeah. So I think uh, and you, yeah. exactly. you can close down Puki, but are you going to close down Cantwell? Cantwell. So I think that uh, Cantwell is that kind of player that you need to shut down, then uh, Puki should be in the isolated lands. So it's really easy for Chelsea to close it down. The, the challenge for Puki is that he's a very quick player and yeah. that has very good bo- bo- off ball movement, and I think mm. that is where Chelsea uh, with Katsuma and Christensen might be able to suffer from. But again, uh, that, that, that's how we're viewing the game so far. Uh, it's been me, Moses, Echodo, and Craig uh, for News Libra Sports and News Libra as a franchise together, and we're saying that. Subscribe to the channel. We'll be bringing you nothing but more of the best stories in sports. But also, uh, you know, if you can't if you can't watch the video, run down to our website. That is www.newsliber.com to read all the sporting stories. But also find all these stories on our different social media pages: News Libra Sports, uh, News Libra, and of course, uh, you know, there's there's so many News Libra pages out there that you can actually benefit from. But again, it's me, Moses Achodo, and the entire team. And we're saying thank you so much. Bye bye. Peace.